you've heard a little bit about reaction time, but what's a time reaction? Well, I'm glad you asked. Actually, um, looking at that, I would say it looks like a number 22. Yes, definitely a 22. Watch carefully and you may see something that you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Well, I said it was a number 22, and it certainly was, wasn't it? How on earth did that happen? Well, I mixed some chemicals together, four simple chemicals, actually, and ones that you may have at home. And you can learn how to do that time reaction if you like, but you'll need four things, and the first of these is iodine. Now, you may have that in the medicine cabinet because iodine is often used as a, an antiseptic or a disinfectant. Uh, it comes from seaweed, actually. It's extracted from seaweed, and... Uh, it's a, a very poisonous chemical. It's used to kill germs, but you have to be careful when you're handling it because it is poisonous and you want to have an adult supervising if you're going to do this experiment. That's the first thing you'll need. The second thing you'll need is hypo. And if anyone in the family is interested in photography, you're bound to have hypo there because hypo is the fixer that's used in photographic uh, developing and printing. So you need a solution of that. The third thing you'll need, and you're almost certain to have this in the home, is starch. Any sort of starch will do but instant starch is the easiest one to make up into a solution. And then the third thing you'll need is hydrogen peroxide. Once again, you may have this in the medicine cabinet. If you don't, you can get it from the chemist. It's also often used as an antiseptic, sometimes as a bleach as well. Now, what do you do with these things? Well, the first thing, you need to know something about iodine and what it does when it comes in contact with starch, those two. Uh, let's mix a little bit of each in uh, one of these tablet tubes. A little bit of iodine. And whenever iodine comes in contact with starch, watch what happens. You get that deep blue colour. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. That time we started with iodine. If we start with starch, and if we add just a little bit of iodine to it, we get this deep, inky, blue-black colour appearing straight away. Now, it didn't occur straight away uh, when we did that time reaction. Why not? Well, that's all to do with uh, another one of the things that we used, and that's hypo. Let's have a look and see what happens if we take some iodine solution and put it in a tablet tube, fill it up to about a quarter full, which is what I did before you came on the scene. I added some hypo solution to the iodine, and watch what happens to it carefully. I'll just add a, a couple of drops, then mix it around. You can see that the colour is fading, and in fact, uh, with just a drop or two, it goes to a pale yellow and then disappears altogether. Now, at this point, the iodine, which is normally brown in solution, has changed to a clear substance called iodide. But the iodine is still there, it's just changed form. It's a bit like taking a room full of Christmas presents and wrapping them up in drab old brown paper. Children coming into the room may not notice them. And that's, a, uh, that's why you can uh, set the starch into the solution, fill it up to about the halfway point now with starch. And although you've got iodine there, and you've also got the starch solution, it's not going that blue-black colour because the iodine is hidden. This is where the hydrogen peroxide comes in. That's a bit like a bunch of wild dogs rushing into the room to devour the brown paper wrapping, leaving the presents exposed and the kids seeing them become happy and gleeful, just as the uh, um, iodine and starch go blue when they finally come into contact with one another. In goes the hydrogen peroxide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? You can adjust the rate of your time reaction by altering the strengths of your solutions and, and particularly how much hypo you put in when you make the iodine change to colourless iodide. Mm -hmm.